Hello, everyone. I'm John Hansen from FantasyPoints.com, and welcome to year two of the Fantasy Points Generator, version 1.2, if you will. Last year, we rolled this out. Now, we invented this software. We built it from scratch using a couple of Ivy League nerds from Bellwether Analytics. Shout out to those guys. And it really is obviously a draft optimizer, a draft tool, all kinds of analytics that run in the background in real time to basically help you accumulate and score the most fancy points possible. Score more points. That is absolutely our goal. And before we get into the tutorial video, which will follow this, I'll go through the setup, how to run the draft, all the bells and whistles. I did want to just mention a couple of the upgrades here for 2021. Number one, the fantasy points generator is now optimized for high stakes drafts and contests like the NFFC using ADP specifically from, for example, the NFFC. Also built in qualitative mode, some rules to help you along the way to really power you through and optimize things for you in high stakes contests like the NFFC. Plus a completely rebuilt back end that makes it run smoother and faster. Customizable draft order for all rounds. Support now for two quarterback leagues and tight end premium leagues and an upgraded keeper entry and much much more here there's a few other things that i'm missing out but that's the cliff notes version of the upgrades to the fantasy points generator here in 2021 for more on this tool and to really walk through it all with me stay tuned that's coming up right next on the video okay here we are at fantasypoints.com getting ready to introduce you to the fantasy points generator for 2021 i know some people get a little intimidated by programs like this one and it's very intense but we spent a lot of time making it very user friendly and i think you'll agree when you go through this video so take your time mess around with it get comfortable with it and you should be good to go let's start with finding it well it is a tool let's go under downloads and tools under tools and we click generator to bring up the fantasy points generator page now you will see some information here on the page just about the fantasy points generator a q a a quick start guide which is where this video will be also here is where you would submit your feedback we'll add a faq page here so before you reach out to us you can scan that to see if your issue is addressed there i will say browser wise browsers are really really tricky if you have problems running this, it doesn't load. You can clear out your cache. You can even try restoring your browser to default settings. And at the end of the day, if that doesn't work, you can move on and try another browser. It runs really well on Firefox, Fox, and Safari, and of course, Chrome as well. But without any further ado, let's launch the Fantasy Points Generator. Now, I have already logged in. This is the screen where you would normally, if you have never accessed a program here this year, you would have to log in. You would use your site login, of course, and then after that, most likely, you saw I didn't have to log in. It will retain that information. Now, what is this here? These are previous drafts that I've done recently for testing purposes and the like. You can go back and view these drafts and see your team, see all the picks, and you'll see where you rank, by the way, in terms of total points, and projected starter points. But we are creating a new league from scratch. So we click the create a new league button and then we basically end up on the setup page. It's a pretty basic page. We'll name this one, we'll call it July test just to name the league so we know how to find it at a later date. Fill in the number of teams. We can go with 14, but we'll just stick with 12 teams here. My draft position I'll give myself the sixth pick of the draft, kind of right there in the middle. Total players drafted, that would be the number of rounds. Let's go with 18. Draft type, your typical snake draft. Third round reversal for those who do that, like in the NFFC. NFL style drafting is, well, for this league, it'll be one through 12 in round one, and then round two, round one through 12. People ask for that, so we added it. Also, a custom 
draft type. This was a big addition for 2021. A lot of people out there trading draft picks, even for a redraft league, and we were unable to support that. But here you go. If Team 1 has traded its seventh-round pick to Team 4, well, now we can assign that to Team 4. So you can totally customize the draft order for those of you out there who trade draft picks. But we'll just go with a custom snake draft order, I meant. A snake draft, your typical 1 through 12 and 12 through 1. So next up, starter by position. Let's keep it simple. One quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, one tight end, one defense, one kicker. We also have a flex. And we can do two flexes. We can do up to three. But we'll do just the one, and we'll include wide receiver, running back, and tight end. Moving down, now it's time to enter our scoring system. If you're in a pretty basic PPR or standard league, I would recommend going with just this, PPR or standard. But we also have 0.5 PPR, 0.5 PPR for running backs, and then 1.5 PPR for tight ends. There are some high-stakes leagues out there that use that. ESPN, Yahoo, NFL, CBS, DraftKings, FanDuel, all preloaded. FFPC and NFFC, also preloaded. But for these, it's really cool. We are using ADP, for example, from the NFFC, constantly updated and hardwired in the qualitative mode that we'll get into in the next video. Hardwired, for example, for the NFFC are some rules and guidelines that come from me. So you're basically like in my brain. For example, in the NFFC, I'd like to have three running backs by round seven. I'd like to have my quarterback by round eight. Things like that. Those are implemented and powered as well here. So you got the qualitative end of things with me and, of course, the quantitative end of things with the, well, the entire program. But we'll go with PPR for now. That's a pretty uh, generic scoring system, of course. And then my team name, we could just name it, uh, you know, TG, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And we're done. Now we're ready to draft. As soon as I hit save league, we will, in fact, be drafting. Okay, and we're ready to draft here from the seven hole of a 14-team draft. Let's start here at the top and talk about the keeper input. You could input and assign keepers to any of the teams in any of the rounds. So if you're keeping Alvin Kamara and it costs a fourth round pick, you can assign Kamara to your team in the fourth round. Set that all up. We're on the clock, well not quite, because the draft has not yet started. Below the keeper input here, a couple of cool things here. This is how you control which players come up on the recommendation list here below. You can focus on starters. You can focus on drafting for depth. You can focus on something in the middle to account for both. You can focus on starters for the first few rounds and then focus on depth. Uh, you decide. You can also click this little button here and it only shows players that we have flagged as having upside or players that we're targeting, or, or players that we deem as league winners. And new for 2021, John Hansen Qualitative Mode. Not the greatest name. By the time you watch this video, it will likely be called Hansen's Hints or something like that. But what this really is, is built in, I have inputted a set of 10 to 12 rules, not incredibly rigid rules because you don't want to be too rigid, but it's my qualitative touch on this. The generator software is all quantitative, only goes by data, our projected points, ADP, and as the draft progresses, position scarcity and the like. So there's not really a human touch to it. That's what the John Hansen qualitative mode is. So for example, not that this is a rule, but if it was, if I said, I must have a quarterback by round four, the software will recommend a quarterback by round four. So without any further ado, I think we can kick this puppy off. There are a couple of other bells and whistles that we'll get to in the final segment of this video, but let's mock to our first pick. 
And there it is. We are now on the clock. You can see the draft report to see what those picks were. Very standard. McCaffrey, Cook, Kamara, Henry, Zeke, Taylor. I am now on the clock. I am in qualitative mode. And let's get a recommendation here. Considering all players who are available, regardless of position, what is the best player on the board per the numbers? No surprise, it is Travis Kelsey. So we will draft Travis Kelsey. Almost feel fortunate to get him at seven. Let's mock to our next pick in round number two and see how this works. We're still in John Hansen qualitative mode. And let's get that recommendation for round two. Interesting. Justin Jefferson. The software deemed that to be the best player on the board. Makes sense. Best running backs on the board are DeAndre Swift and J.K. Dobbins. Well, Jefferson is scoring 30-plus more points. So while it's a little scary to ignore running back, the software has crunched the numbers. We're still in John Hansen qualitative mode. So you're not, you know, in the wilderness just yet in terms of sticking with the way I would do things. This is not ideal, but I'm not against it in terms of getting good running backs in rounds three, four, five. I think it's possible. So let's take Jefferson and see what we see here in round number three. As you can see, it's pretty sophisticated, but also pretty simple to use. By the way, the draft report that we saw earlier, you can do it by position or by round whenever you'd like. But we are in need of mocking to our next pick. And now we are on the clock here in the third round. I'm sure it's going to recommend a running back because we're in John Hansen qualitative mode and no way in hell am I going through three rounds without at least one running back. So let's see what the software says. And of course, no surprise, it does say Miles Sanders. Now we have one tight end, one wide receiver, one running back. Spreading that talent around, that is something I do like to do. Basically going best player available Let's see what that is, though, in round number four. Look at that. Daryl Henderson. So the software basically detected that Daryl Henderson is the pick because despite the fact that Adam Thielen is projected to score 25 more points, software doesn't know that Jefferson and Thielen play for the same team, by the way. But the software does know that Daryl Henderson's the pick, because if we don't take Daryl Henderson, we are probably in trouble. So even though Adam Thielen is going to score more points per the projections, it is about position scarcity too, and we do need an RB too. So we will bring him into the fold. Now, in this vein, there is a very cool feature called Advanced Analytics, and here is something really cool. When you're on the clock, you can call up your recommendation to see what the software says. That's a little surprising. This is a 14-team league. I am inclined to get a good quarterback. We're already 63 picks into the draft, so it's not that shocking that Stafford is being recommended. However, if we're not sure of this, that is when we go to Advanced Analytics. And what this does is it already knows the future. So basically, a quarterback, if I pass on Stafford, it's, it's telling me that Aaron Rodgers will be available in a round. And if I pass on Aaron Rodgers, I'll still be able to get Joe Burrow, who I like. So am I taking Stafford here? Probably not. Running back, same deal. The top guy is Chase Edmonds. If I take him, if I take a running back now, then it's going to be Chase Edmonds. If I wait a pick, my next best option is likely Michael Carter. Really puts it into perspective. This is a good example, too, because the wide receiver recommendation in this round is Debo Samuel. But the software is also saying, you know, by the way, you guys are a lot higher on Debo than most. His ADP is a little lower than you have him ranked. So if you wait around, the best player is still going to be Debo. So don't take Debo. There's no value in that. Same thing with Hawkinson. So that is a great example of the advanced analytics and the stuff that that offers. And maybe that's why 
By the way, it's saying Stafford because you can still get Hawkinson and you can still get some pretty darn good players. So we'll listen to the software and we'll go with Matthew Stafford. Two Rams in a row. We can mock to our next pick and we'll see what the recommendation is here while still in John Hansen qualitative mode. It is, in fact, Debo Samuel. We'll see. Software told us last round that if we pass on a wide receiver, we'd still get a crack at Debo Samuel. So we're proud of the software for doing that for us. So we'll take Debo Samuel. I think you get a pretty good uh, overview of the drafting process here in this portion of the video. Okay, let's tie up some loose ends here with the Fantasy Points Generator. Talk about a couple of things I didn't cover and wrap it up here and give you a quick overview of all the upgrades here in 2021. The draft that we were working on in the second video is, well, it's currently on hold, but we can certainly access that at any time. And as you see, I did not have to log in. Again, we can hit the view button here and view this draft. Let's take a look. I believe I did make a pick off camera of Aaron Rodgers per the software recommendation. Okay, so let's mock to our next pick. Oh, it is our turn. You see that? When you hit that and it's your turn, it says, uh, excuse me, sir, you're on the clock. Okay, so let's check off Hanson's hints. Let's show the upside players and let's get a recommendation for round number eight. It is Hollywood Brown. Now, maybe you're not totally sure on taking a wide receiver in this round or any round, you're in the fifth, you don't know. Should I go wide receiver? Should I go running back? We may not get a great example of this in round seven, but we'll take a look. Advanced analytics is where you want to go. So let's say you're interested in taking a quarterback. Joe Burrow would be your best option on the board on the left side here. But on the right side, you see this expected best player if you wait. So right now, if you pick a quarterback, it's Burrow. If you wait a pick, it's still Burrow. Per the ADP, he's still going to be available for your next pick. So maybe you skip over Burrow. And let's take a look at a running back. If I want to go running back now in this round, best pick is Zach Moss. But if I pass on Moss, I'd like to know, okay, if I pass on him, who would be the best option most likely available per ADP? Well, that would be A.J. Dillon. do kind of like A.J. Dillon, but this is a good example. Now, if it's Hollywood, if you waited a pick, you could still get Hollywood. That is caused, by the way, because we have Hollywood higher than others, but if you use somebody else's projections, it may be a different thing. The reason Hollywood comes in twice is because we basically have him ranked at least one round over his ADP. But at tight end, it's a good example, too. If you want to take a tight end right now, the software is saying Robert Tanyan is the pick. However, if you wanted to wait around, Tanyan would not be on the board. So Irv Smith, FYI, would be the next best pick. Now it does this for defenses and kickers as well. This is just yet another way to maximize and optimize your draft, get the most points. It's called the Fantasy Points Generator for a reason. We are generating the most points possible. A couple of other little things I didn't touch on. By the way, this is not going to be tied into your live draft. Like We're not going to tap into the ESPN draft room and make all the picks automatically that your league mates are making. You're going to have to manually enter them, but it shouldn't take you too long because we have this search feature right here. So Let's say it's round eight or whatever. Antonio Brown just goes off the board. So you just do a quick thing of Brown and you pick him for that team. Should be pretty easy. Let's, let's by the way, take Hollywood Brown in round number eight. And let's see how we stack up. Now, this one may not be great because the seventh round pick of Aaron Rodgers, I'm not even sure if that was a recommendation. But let's see how we stack up. And this is worth noting for everyone. As the draft progresses, you can always see where you stand. And this team right now, it's not great. It's only 10th in terms of the starter rank and 9th in terms of the total rank. I did go off the reservation a couple of times. Nine times out of 10 when I do this, the, the team comes in real high in terms of the starter rank and the total rank, either second or first for both. But this one was a little weird as we experimented. So this one 
not not wonderful um but it's a nice way to see how you did in the draft and how you're doing actually you can kind of keep keep doing that so i think we have covered all the key elements here of the 2021 fantasy points generator so to quickly recap your upgrades for 2021 in version let's call it 1.2 optimized for high stakes drafts like the nffc using specific adp for each contest type and built-in qualitative analysis from me which is basically like being in my brain it's a qualitative look with the software and the number crunching and a quantitative look with me setting in some somewhat hard and some loose rules and guidelines and things like that. For example, I'd like to have my quarterback by round seven, for example. If that's one of the rules in hints and hints, then it will recommend a quarterback to you uh, before round seven. It's also optimized for the NFFC and the FFPC and those high stakes leagues as well. And it uses ADP from those contests, especially the NFFC ADP, which is the best. Otherwise, a completely rebuilt back end makes it smoother and faster. We talked about the customizable draft order for all rounds, which is great for those who trade draft picks and the like. We talked about the keeper entry. That's been upgraded this year as well. One other thing that I did fail to mention is for those in two quarterback leagues when you're setting up the draft and super flex leagues we did not put a super flex option here why well we decided as a staff that if we're in a super flex we're proceeding as if it's a two quarterback league so that's a recommendation if it's a super flex league just put two quarterbacks in and it's going to give the quarterbacks a lot of love and it's going to recommend them early and make sure you're set at the position in a super flex and not shut out and left out in the cold looking for scraps at the quarterback position there it is i think i've covered it all the fantasy points generator i think you can agree if you watch this video to the end that it's a very robust program with a lot going on on the back end and it's been optimized and perfected for speed because again there's a lot of data crunching going on here but it's doing it very very quickly but also very simple very easy to input the information. It is very intuitive. I think if you do this and try this out, you'll be good to go for your real draft. And final recommendation, use this to practice drafting. This is the best mock draft tool that I've ever seen. There are some good ones out there, no doubt, but this is the best because this is the most realistic one that you'll find. And then when you're ready to rock and roll with your draft, you should be very familiar with the software. And again, you should be good to go. So I'm John Hansen. That's a wrap for this guide to the 2021 Fantasy Points Generator. I'd say good luck drafting, but you don't even really need it with the software. So, hey, congratulations for your victorious season in 2021.